on party Sam, welcome to part 12 of our Tamiya 112 Honda RC 21V by Phil's. As always, make sure you sub to the channel, click the bell notification, give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. I do reply to every single one and I appreciate everyone that's left comments and support and has followed this build. Uh, it's proven very popular on YouTube and it's safe to say I've enjoyed it that much. There will be another bike build in the pipeline down the road. There definitely will be. What we got today, I managed to get two videos out of the footage we got. So part 12 today is just going to be on exhaust staining. Part 13, we're going to get all those major components assembled that we've been working on for the last week. And uh, we've made a good ground on the bike. But we'll see that. that will come out Wednesday next week, probably midweek. Uh, but it's there. It's ready. It's edited. Just needs voiceover and done. So exhaust staining. I I've done some today that I see as achievable by anybody. It's not difficult to do. You can use a little bit of artistic license. All this is individual. How you see these exhaust stains is all down to your perception of it. So you might look at mine and think that's not right. To me, it looks right. So take my technique if you want to use it and add it to your own. You know, if you want to add a bit more colour or tone it down a bit more or you know paint the whole thing blue, whatever, that is your choice. Mine is how I've done it today. Now I could have spent a whole lot more time on this and done weld seams, weld stains, completely gone to town making it look, you know, truly rainbowish as some people do. I don't quite like that look, but I could have added weld seams and that would have been a big difference to it. But I wanted to do something that you could look at and think, I could do that or I could give that a go rather than looking at it and thinking, my God, that's a lot of work. I'm not going to bother. And I do that. I see people's work and think that looks phenomenal. I couldn't do that and it'll put you off doing it. So hopefully what you see me do today, you think you can do. Like I say, we've got the hot metal out clouds. We've got red, blue, sepia, violet, the base color LP11 we used and the ultimate apex with the 0.2 needle. We're about 10 PSI. It's really easy to do. It's just get a reference and follow your reference and you can go back and add more or using the base colour, take it off. There's no right or wrong way of doing this. It's just what your mind perceives as looking right. So, like you say, you may look at mine and think that's not right. To me, it is. Now, with there going to be another bike build, in the next one, we'll really go to town the exhaust. We'll add weld seams, joins. We'll stain it a bit more. Um, we'll add exhaust uh, springs to it. And I think on the next bike build, we'll have added a few bits to this build, a few aftermarket parts, a little bit of carbon here and there. We'll fully carbon everything. We'll throw a full detail set at it. That's the plan anyway. Um, I've enjoyed this so much that I'm really looking forward to doing another bike build. So we will definitely get one. Which one it will be, I don't know. I'll decide that. Probably be a Yamaha, to be honest. But we will we'll, we'll throw the kitchen sink at the next one and chuck everything we can find at it. So, like I say, with this build, I'm hoping this is something you can watch and think, I could do that and have a go yourself. It's not difficult at all. It's a little bit time consuming. Like I say, you can rectify mistakes really easily by just respraying it starting again or respraying a section. Um, just use your perception of it as you want. I've got some pictures I put on Facebook the other day of exhaust stain on the Hondas. I've got some pictures in the video. Use them as reference should you wish. Um, but that's it. It's as simple as that. So don't be put off by doing this. It's really easy to do. Um, it's in your mind's eye what it's going to look like. So that's the way to go for it. Don't look at somebody else and think, oh, that's not right. I'll do it like that anyway. Do it how you see it, how you feel it should look. Because at the end of the day, it's right to you. It doesn't matter what anybody else thinks at the end of the day. And there we are. Right, let's jump into the video. I think we're going straight into the spray booth. I forget now. And um, let's get cracking on this. Okay, now we're not in the booth. We're at the bench. We're looking at all our work from last time. So all our exhausts have been painted now. We've got them painted in Tamiya LP11, uh, which is just a aluminium colour. Uh, all the seams, I'm just checking, they're all fully filled in and happy with them. And they all look absolutely spot on. So that, that laborious task of sanding and filling was well worth doing. And we've got a really nice base colour for the exhaust here. Now we're also going to use this as our colour to blend the colours in later on. Uh, but for now... Just checking all the seams around. It's going to try and separate this part. Be very, very careful with this part. It's very easy to break. Uh, it's quite brittle on its join. So, as I say, very happy how it's gone. Um, it's all filled in nice. Really happy with it. 
and as a base color absolutely spot on really happy with that so a little bit of reference now we've got my moto gp pit wall box as you can see this is the lcr uh, lcr honda we're building you see that light blue to purple to red staining on the back of the uh, exhaust pipe on the Kanika Minolta, it's just got a bit of blue to purple. So they do vary from bike to bike and obviously use to use. We've got the Fortuna bike, all the same bike, um, 2006 RC211, but they all vary in their stain. And every bike's going to vary because all the exhausts are different ages. These exhausts are replaced regularly. And again, we're on the LCR Honda and you can see some of the wild teams, which we'll talk about in the intro and outro and the exhaust springs as well. But you can see the different levels of staining on two different riders' bikes. So it just shows you it's not uniform. It's not all universal. We've got some beautiful blue to violet to sepia stain in there as well. And again, onto the Repsol Honda. Totally different, full welded seams on the bottom pipe. And again, absolutely beautiful hues. And again, it varies from bike to bike. So use these reference pictures as a reference you don't have to try and copy them again you've got major areas of blue and then blue to red to purple uh violet to sepia and again it's all different from bike to bike that's the lcr honda again you can see where there's areas of dark blue no staining whatsoever it just varies from bike to bike but this is the effect i'm kind of aiming for so we're going to pick this one pipe so this is the pipe from the front of the engine um, to the back it's not including the lower uh, exhaust as well i'm just going to show you on this one piece and then i'll take these techniques and apply them to all the other exhaust parts as well so we've got our collard hot metal blue red violet and sepia we've got our ump apex uh, which has got the 0.2 mil uh, needle conversion set in it and we've got tamiya lp11 base color as well now these need shaking really well. They are ultra, ultra thin paint. It will catch you out because it does to me any second now. So the best way of decanting these is use a pipette. Store the pipette upside down with the paint and then you can close your bottle. You stand no risk of spilling it or whatever like that. As you can see, it does spill really easily, especially out of the pipettes. So get it filled, turn it upside down and store it out of the way. Now, using your reference, keep your book well out of the way. You don't want to get paint on them. I have my drawer open to my right, and it sits in there so I can see it. Make sure you've got good light. There's no paint on your fingers. Pick a section and make a start. So I always start with the blue. Then I go to the red. Then I go to the purple. And then I try and add the sepia afterwards. So very lightly. We're at 10 PSI. We've got no pressure whatsoever. We're not trying to hose it on because it won't work. It will literally run it. Is that thin of paint? And we're just adding blue to the areas where the staining starts. And then we'll add red and the violet extending out. And that shows the heat stain as it progresses from blue to red to violet. So using your reference, just keep having a quick look and just applying it very lightly. Use your glove as a test spray so you can see just how much is coming out with your trigger pull. And just keep applying it slowly. It will take a while to build up. But the longer you take, as I said through this whole build, the preparation is key. Um, the longer you take, the better it will look. And you see we've got some light blue stain in there. You can see it more there on an angle. Have a little look. Make sure you've got the areas. Now, the areas to concentrate on are any, where there's any restriction, where there's any joins, bends, or um, two into one flow, you are going to get heat stain in there because the heat will build up more there. So just keep applying it until you're happy you got the coverage you want. Like I said in the intro and outro to this video, this is a personal perception. Use your reference. Um, we're not dealing with real metal. We're not dealing with real heat. So to get the effect is quite difficult. But follow this way, and it'll give you what I perceive as a, you know, an acceptable level that looks okay and is passable in my eye. Just remember, this is ultra, ultra thin paint. It really is very, very thin. So just really take your time building it up in all those areas the blue is probably going to be the largest area you're going to spray because it's going to form the base layer under everything so this is one of the easier ones to spray with the red and violet you can have to be a little bit more precise at where it's going so i'm aiming for any angles joins bends anything and of course where you've got the pipes uh the headers uh, going into the manifold, it's going to stain a lot more because there's a lot more heat buildup. So 
use that to you know, your own advantage as well and add a lot more staining at the front of the pipes. Once you're happy you've got all the areas painted where you want them that color you can start applying a little bit heavier if you want so i just go around had a quick little line move to the next bit and like i say this is the base for our color so this is going to be the largest part you paint so just make sure you got the coverage where you want it it's even it's you know kind of not uniform but it's equally spaced around you've got all four sides um covered and uh, just make sure you're happy with your blue. You can always come back and have more. It's not a problem at all. And my best advice is get the lid on that bottle as soon as you can. Use the pipettes and stand them up out of the way so you can come back. We've got the hot metal red now. Again, same thinness. So take your time again. Clean the uh, brushes between. You are going to need to do it. As you see, I've used pipette again. And what we're going to do now is we're looking to go to not the very edge, but move along the blue a little bit because we need to leave room for the violet as well and we're just going to add the red so we get the transition from the blue to the red to the sepia and yeah the violet and sepia so what you'll see now is where you start applying the red the blue will go purple and that's now giving us some nice variation in tone and a progression in the heat now like i say don't forget you can come back and add more um color should you wish of either color any colors at all and you can even take it back by using the base color of L uh, LP tw uh, 11, like I'll do in a little bit. So if you think, oh, that's too much, you can come back, a little bit of LP 11 over the top, fade it down. You can even use the sepia to fade it down so you get more of an actual heat um, burning effect as such rather than a stain. It is still a stain, but it looks more of a, a burn effect than a stain. And you can tone it down that way. Just keep referring to your reference. Just keep looking. And like I say, we're just trying to get that progression. So we leave a little bit of blue at one side, take it to the red, and then we take it to the violet in the next one. 
and we get that nice heat progression and it should give us a good effect all the way through. On top of that, we're going to move on to the violet. This is an absolutely beautiful colour. As you can see, we started popping up our pipettes. We've got little bits of paint left in the bottom. So if we want to change back, we can, as you can see, using the 0.2mm needle of pressure, we can get ultra thin lines with the apex. Really beautiful. So this is what we want to do now. We're going to add a little bit more paint. There we go. Use your pipettes. Keep them there with paint. You can go back and change colours really quick. So what we want to do now is where we've gone from the blue to the red, we want to go from the blue to the red. To the violet now and that will give us our nice heat stained look you don't have to use the violet um i just like the effect it gives it gives almost a holographic effect if you do it right but all we're doing is just lightly spraying a line through each previous color we've done before to give us that transition from blue to red to violet and again just go around all the parts Obviously, the nearer the front engine we're going to get, especially on those intakes to the uh, manifold, intakes, the uh, out um, to the manifold, they are going to get hotter. So you'll probably get a bit more staining at the front. But you can see there, just by adding that little bit, we're getting a nice effect now. And it's a case of getting it how you want it and then blend it all together so it doesn't look too OTT. Now, like I say, in the next part, I am going to fix um, those clamps at the back and the hanger. And I'm probably going to spray them up in a bit more of a brighter silver to give more of a tonal variation. Uh, but for this video today, I literally wanted to get the exhaust staining done to show you. So just keep using your reference. Keep looking. Make sure you've got enough. Like I so say, you can take it back. You can add more. Just um, keep adding it until you're happy with the colours. So I've reloaded the airbrush with the blue. We're going to add a touch more blue to the colour. Like I say, keep them in the pipettes. They're really handy to switch and change. Just make sure you clean the airbrush between colour cups. And uh, yeah, again, just keep adding it until you're happy with the colours, happy with the transitions, and happy with the heat staining to a point where we can start blending it in so it doesn't look as obvious. So just go all around, keep adding, go back through all the colours, re-adding them, adding more heat, taking it off. Whatever you want to do, it's pretty easy to do. And literally, you could start all over again by base painting the exhaust again if you weren't happy. happy with that so we're going to grab some sepia now and we're going to add some other more burnt effect 
I call it burnt effect, um, to it. And as you can see, we've got all the pipettes lined up now. I've got a little bit of paint left in them. So it's handy to keep them like that. That way you keep the lids on your bottles as well. They don't get spilt everywhere. And the sepia is a beautiful color. As you can see, I've spilt half it on my bench. That's just as a test to see the color, honestly. So what we're going to do, we're going to do the ends of the exhaust now to give that heat stain at the end without any color actual variation. And we're going to go over um, the part we've added the blue, red, and violet to as well. And try and blend them together a touch so it's not as stark or totally different color as we've got. And then what we'll do at the end, we'll come through with the original base color of the exhaust, the LP11, and go over everything and really tone it down and blend it in. Um, so it looks a bit more natural. But as you see, the heat stain at the end and the sepia looks fantastic. I really love this color uh, for exhaust stain and it's invaluable. As you see, we're getting some nice variation. Um, you can see it better at the end of the video. So stick around, you'll really see the difference then. We're happy with that. It's coming along well. It's a case you just keep going around till you're happy. Keep referring to your references and just use your own imagination how you want it to look. As you see, we've got some nice variation there. It's a little bit too much um, in places, so we will tone it down. But for now, I'm happy with that. That's a good starting point. Now, bear in mind, you've got this one piece. This took me about ooh, 20 minutes to do. And then you've got another four to do as well. So you've got a bit of work to do, four separate sections. So it's going to take you a while. It's probably two, three hours work doing these exhausts. And unfortunately, unless your phone's a removable like mine, you won't see a lot of it either. So it is a bit of a shame. But it's worth doing because you can see some of it. As you see, we've got some really nice variation there now. Looking good. So, Tamiya LP11. This is the base silver colour we painted the exhaust in. So, we're going to thin this a little bit more than normal. Probably about 70% thinner, 30% paint. Uh, we're through the 0.2mm apex again. And we're going to mist this over uh, in a minute. We're just going to add a little bit of uh, contrast between the heat staining and the sepia at the end of the exhaust. So, it gives it a bit more of a um you can see it a little bit better because it doesn't just go from color to sepia it's had the, uh, actually adding the original color back a touch and then what we'll do is where we've got the stain in, there we go we're going to start misting it now from a distance just to tone it down a touch and that will tie it all in together then it should hopefully give us a really nice effect now what i did do once i was happy with this i left it for a few hours Came back in, looked at it with what I call fresh eyes. It's like, you know, you've been out the room, you've been concentrating on something else. Come back and look at it as a fresh. And I thought, it looks good. And I put pictures of it on Facebook and I thought, you know what? It needs a touch more red. So all I did was right in between all the, the blue, red, violet, sepia, I just added another little streak of red and that tied everything together beautifully. Then it went a nice purpley red colour and uh, really toned it all down and it looked a lot better but there you go quite happy with that now we've got areas of staining heat we've got some areas of the original, original color and i'm happy with how that's coming together now so really good top tip on this is having you painting the pipette at the back upside down they're holding small reservoirs of paint so you can switch your colors easy take your time have low air pressure um don't be worried about messing it up because you can always overspray it and start again it's not a problem at all and just remember these alkaline paints are pretty thin that they are very very thin as you can see by all the spills on my bench so it doesn't take a lot to flood so just take your time and applying the colors and just do it to your eyes use your reference and just do it until you're happy with the colors and once you are you can then sit back and enjoy them so this is just after that part. I haven't added any other colours whatsoever. And it does look good. It still looks good. But for me, when I came back, I thought there's just not enough contrast between the blue. Uh, I toned it down a, probably a little bit too much. Uh, whilst we still had nice hues of blue, red and violet, I think it just needed to be a touch stronger. So I literally took it back into the spray booth. Loaded the airbrush up with the hot metal red again and just added it in between all those bends and joins until we got a bit more of a purple effect. But it's looking good. These are all just push fitted in for now. So like I said, I just want to look at it with my own eyes and, you know, after being away from the bench for a little bit, 
just see what it looked like and yeah it looked okay not too bad at all but i think it definitely benefited from having a little bit of extra red which you'll see in the next video so after coming back in and looking at it again properly i added a touch more red and as you can see we've got a much nicer effect a lot happier with this now it really goes from blue to red to purple and that was the effect i was looking at so worthwhile putting it down for a little bit and coming back looking at it fresh and thinking yeah that needs a touch more and that's what we did and well worth the extra time there we are then that's where we're at today um as you can see i snuck a little bit of footage in from my other video which is a little bit further down the line when the exhausts are actually on the bike just to show the staining and i think you can see the difference from when i've added a little bit of extra red because the red and the blue go purple it just gives that fade through i think it looks a lot better like i say this is something I've done to make it easier for people watching to do. This isn't necessarily how I think it should look without the welding uh, marks on it because they, sh they should be there, really. Uh, most of the reference shows it. But like I said, I want to do something achievable, everybody, and that's why we've done this today. Like I said, we'll come back next time. We'll add a full detailed upset. We'll really go to town on the bike and see how good we can get it to look. For me, I'm happy with this. And to be honest, probably 90% of the exhaust is invisible with the fairings on. So... It's one of those, that, that, there's a piece of carbon decaling coming up in the next video that took me over two hours to do. And I'm literally going to show it on camera for three minutes and then we'll never ever see it again. But I did it to show you and it looks good. <laughs> but it, it's one of those things, the, the, the detail you add is up to you. And for this video, we're adding a few, but the next bike series we do, we'll throw a bit more at it and see what we can get out of it. So there we are. Hope you found that useful today um the hot metals are superb i've used them for years um they're probably some of the best alkali products they do and we stock them at ump now as well and this might be a sales pitch it is there's a reason we stock them because i use them so i've said to lee let's get them uh, it's not just get them in or oh, i'll plug them because they're great no i've used them for years go back to any of my bike builds they're all heat stained with the alkali clears and if you look on the video you'll see my old bottles in shock as i was just looking to make sure the colors were the same still um so they're available on umpretail.com we've got aqua gloss on there as well we just selected a few of the alkali products on there go over and have a look and if you've got the lp clears you should be able to do it with those too just make sure they're highly thinned and when you're painting take your time with them being so thin it's easy to flood yeah so take your time doing it there we are so we'll be back probably Wednesday, I'm going to schedule the next video. Uh, major assembly, we get all the exhaust on, the fuel tank, um, carbon bits, um, the seat fairing holder bit. <laughs> We've got some more carbon decaling to do, uh, and it's a major step of assembly, uh, which only leaves us a little bit more to do, which is absolutely fantastic. So keep an eye out for that on Wednesday, it should be up then. And uh, I hope you found this video useful. If you've got any comments or questions, pop them down below. Um, and as always, sub to the channel, make sure you've got the bell notification switched on, give us a thumbs up, leave a comment, I'll reply to them all. Check out umpretail.com, uh, all the iCloud stuff's on there. Uh, check out ISM Facebook page and forum, uh, my poor ISM Facebook page, all my modeling work goes, the Live of the Year Bench page, and the Off Air Hangout group as well. I'll catch you all later, take care, bye bye.